Hello everybody, uh, welcome to my channel. Today I'm planning on um, copying this picture onto a watercolor paper. Uh, I saw Steve Mitchell on Mind of Watercolor do this. Uh, he had copied copied one uh, of the pictures from Johanna Basford's uh, coloring books. And he did that, you know, to have an image to uh, practice uh, flat washes and glazing and wetting wet and charging and all this um, and I never thought of that that you can actually you know since you're not selling the pictures you're copying this picture for your own use it's okay and I like to color uh, color book pictures with watercolor but you know <sighs> I never thought of it that I could actually copy the picture and then, um, you know, copy it over. I don't know how you say it. You know, trace it with the help with the help of the light pad, trace it onto a watercolor paper. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try to use my newbie skills and paint this bird and if you haven't noticed yet i like birds yes so let's get started i'm gonna turn off uh turn on the light pad and i need to have it on the strongest because water color paper is quite thick and i'm gonna work on a 300 gram um fabio Artistico Fabiano and I think the 300 grams is like 140 pound paper and I can't tell you if it's um, cold press or I think it's a cold press actually because it's not a rough and it is not a satin anyway so I want to place it where I want it on the paper and I want it something like this and now I have my painter's tape And I'm using painter's tape to, you know, uh, fixate the pictures. Um, I could just do it like this. Now it's a bit crooked. Oh well. Um, yeah, so it doesn't move. And I was thinking that I was going to use my um, graphite pen first and then use the ink pen to draw the lines. But it feels like uh, I'm doing the job, the tracing twice. And I don't want to do that. So I think I'm just going to use my um, ink pen straight away and I don't have the best painter's tape but you know let's go like this and I'm using a Stedler pigment liner 
five. I hope this is in the view. I didn't choose one of the thinner pens because um, it's a bit of a rough um, page of the paper and I would just wanted to save those pencils for um, future use. looks like it's, these look like eggs because they're so smooth and round but I want them to be rocks and I'm thinking that this is also a way to do it if you know if you feel like you're not very good at drawing buildings or yeah other birds and you want to paint them I mean this is definitely a way to do it so yeah I'm gonna keep on doing what I can see and I'm going to fast forward and when I'm done, I'll get back. small details left um, this was a very fun way to you know to get a an image to work with, to play with. And you don't have to get one with this uh, much detail. Yeah, so I'm happy with this. Um, I'm going to use uh, Paints Gray and uh, Ultramarine and Alicerin, Alicerin Crimson. I think I'm going to use those three colors to try to get um, something out of this. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go do that. Okay, yeah, so I'm back. Um, I've moved back into my little crafting space. Uh, so the lighting might be a little bit different from yes. Well, I recorded the other part yesterday. Anyway, so here's um, my copy of uh, Johanna Basford's coloring pa page, which I've transferred to the watercolor pa paper. Here's my tray 
And here's three of the brushes I've chosen. I'm not sure they're going to work. But the uh, two of them are the silver uh, black velvet brushes, uh, four and eight. And this is my Da Vinci Maestro number six. And the colors I've chosen is uh, Paints Gray. So this is Daniel Smith Paints Gray. I have the permanent Alizarin Crimson, also Daniel Smith. And then I had a Cotman's Ultramarine. Not the best, but it will do. Um, yes. Um, so, um, <clears throat> usually when I get to this point, when I'm going to start, you know, painting, I get very, very intimidated. I, there's so much detail. I don't know how I'm going to fill it out. I just, my plan was just to use the paint spray at first, but then I thought maybe it would get too flat if I just used paint spray. But of course, if you do it in different shades, it shouldn't be any problem. But I was thinking that if I do mix some ultramarine and alucerin into this <coughs> with the paint spray, I think maybe I could get some highlights out of it. At the same time, I don't know where I'm going to put the highlights, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Um, I noticed I want to add some lines here. At the same time, I'm doing this, you know, to learn something from it. And I guess... Um, I'm just going to have to see it that way. But I want to just check out how those colors mix together. Let's see if I have some cheaper. Is this the Fabriana? All of them? I think so. Anyway, let's have a mixing. We're just going to play around, okay? So that's paints gray. And then I want my ultramarine there. I'm using way too much color. I know that. You don't have to comment about that. <clears throat> Very basic colors. Let's move the bird away just to try these out. Um, I'm missing some paper actually. Didn't I? Oh, yeah, I have my cloth. So now I just want to see how these colors look on paper. Paints gray. marine and alicerin alicerin crimson so now let's mix them So a little bit more blue, I like that. So this was Payne's Gray and Ultra 
no, yeah, paints gray and ultra marine. And here we have alicerin and ultramar ultramarine, but there was too much alicerin in that. So there is more blue in that. Let's mix let's mix um paints gray and alicerin. Not so much pigment, but hmm. let me put some more of the purple in there. I would say the the paints gray and the ultramarine mix would be nice. And the plan is also to practice flat washes, right? And glazing and stuff, just some basic techniques. flat wash I think the cue was to keep this line wet it's not allowed to dry So what I'm doing is when I feel like there's a pool uh, and it's hard to handle, I dry off the tip of my brush on my cloth or a piece of tissue or something. So it's actually stupid to paint with another shade <clears throat> just to the side of that area which uh, hasn't dried yet. 
because there is a big ri risk that they will bleed in to each other. Sometimes I think I have like a problem to, uh, you know, not choose so many different um, shades. So maybe this would turn out just much better if I just stick to paints gray. I want to keep this a little bit wet here because I want to charge in with uh, some darkness. same mistake again. I started painting in the area just beside the area which is wet. to see without sticking my face underneath the camera. So I want again darker. So, I think most of it has dried. I will take my number four smaller uh, brush and see if I can get in some uh, deepening uh, under all the, the feathers. Um, as you can see, I've done some of it there. Uh, the eye didn't turn out too well, uh, but I can highlight it with some white Posca pen. Okay, so how, how, how? I'm not good at this. I don't know how you faint it out, fade it out. without, you know, leaving lines or making it look blemished.
so I guess you should just do this layer by layer until you're happy with the effect, you know, and let it dry in between. I'm in my little bubble here, so that's why I'm I'm getting quiet and yeah. I'm not too happy with this, but it was just, you know, for the techniques and to learn how to to use the colors and the brushes and trying to handle the water and the paint. So I see I need more, I want more dark underneath these feathers here. So as it is now, I feel that glazing wet on dry is something I want to practice on uh, and not as detailed pictures as this bird. So I guess it's kind of fun just sitting and fiddling with it. Usually, usually lose my pa patience before I'm finished and just usually call it finished before it is so.
so my intention wasn't to make the bird this dark. this area. Hopefully it's dry enough. I'm just going to charge it with black. It's not black, it's paint gray. I don't know why I keep calling it black. zoom in. Oh, it looks quite dark. So it's very dark. And it feels like it's getting a little bit muddy. Um, yeah, and then try it and I want to try out the background a little bit and my palette pen Oh well. Oh 
Oh, I'm so bad. I forgot to close it. You probably can't see any of this. So, just want some increased background. I need to. Okay, um, so it's still wet. Uh, I think the background kind of helped. Um, trying to soft those edges. And at some point I will color in uh, the rest and yeah I, I think it, it turned out quite dark but still uh, with the background I'm happy um, so I will stop And um, I will get back to it another time and finish up. I will zoom out a little bit. So yeah, um, this was a fun way to, to paint uh, and color a piece of Johanna Bassford at the same time. And this was Steve Mitchell's idea from the Mind of Watercolor. Go check him out. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Um, and hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe. Because then I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.